there's a lot of complicated limiting factors that Africans have had to, to struggle with since independence. Uh, you know, the colonial, the, the legacy of the slave trade and the colonial era was very bad for Africa. There was a lot of violence involved in that by Europeans, not by Africans. And uh, at independence, these artificial states were created out of, out of nowhere, you know, that uh, did not have any previous sort of national identification, national identity. And so Africa has done, uh, you know, not so bad for a continent that was created under such inauspicious circumstances. Uh, some economic historians have compared them recently to Latin America, which was created under similar conditions early in the 19th century, early in the 1800s. Uh, also rather artificial nations at first in Latin America. And Latin America also had a half century of war and poverty and, and not much growth. And then eventually got its act together and now it's had much more growth and much more escape from poverty. We're now only 10% of the population of, of Latin America is in poverty, whereas 50% of the population in Africa is in poverty. So, you know, homegrown economic development does, does happen. Uh, it does happen every, everywhere sooner or later. Some countries are unlucky, but it, the, the answers have to be homegrown. They're, they cannot be parachuted in by experts. Uh, success in escaping poverty everywhere always has been homegrown, not, not driven by expert advice, by outsiders. You know, there's certainly tremendous humanitarian needs in Africa, um, and there are rich people in the West who want to help. So, you know, there's, there should be a market there, there, that there are people who need, and there are rich people who want to help, that there should be a, a sort of philanthropy market that does, that does close, that does reach, uh, that does clear eventually, and uh, rich people's money does make it through to alleviate some of these humanitarian needs. I think the only reason that hasn't happened is because we've been stuck in this sort of Jeff Sachs big plan, just spend more government World Bank money and the problem is solved. Uh, if instead we had much more accountable aid agencies that were much more accountable for whether they got the infants that were getting dehydrated, whether they got them rehydration kits, whether they got the children who are about to get measles vaccinated for measles, whether they got the children who are malnourished uh, nutritional supplements. If they were held accountable for results like this, then I think actually rich people's money can do some good to alleviate some of these humanitarian tragedies in Africa until homegrown development does come along. But I don't think the West is going to achieve the end of poverty in Africa like Jeff Sachs does. I think Africans are going to achieve the end of poverty in a homegrown way. Africans are going to save themselves. It's not going to be Jeff Sachs that saves Africa. It's not going to be Bono that saves Africa. It's not going to be Bob Geldof that saves Africa. It's going to be Africans that save Africa. Well, I'd like to see two, two things happen. One is that, first, that the West will be much more humble and modest about what it can do in, in Africa, that it will realize it can meet some humanitarian needs if we do hold our aid agencies accountable for meeting those needs. And, that, and that's, that's it, stop, end of, end of story for, for what the West can do. And then the second thing I'd like to see is, is you know, a kind of a awakening within Africa, which I think is already happening and doesn't really need my help to happen, uh, that they don't need to look to the West to rescue them. Uh, this is already happening. Uh, that. Africans realize that the, end, the escape from poverty is going to happen in Africa the same way it happened everywhere else, through homegrown efforts, through democratic reforms, through free markets, through dynamic entrepreneurs like the, you know, the cell phone entrepreneurs that are making cell phone use double every year for the past seven years in Africa, like the internet providers that are making internet use double every year for the last seven years in Africa. These are the dynamic entrepreneurs that are giving Africa a future. In fact, the last five years of growth in Africa have been the highest in Africa's history. So uh, it's a little too soon to say, oh, you know, the problem is over, Africa's on a growth path. Uh, things can still go, plenty of things can still go wrong. Uh, but it's, it's time that we, you know, handed the ball over to Africans and, and Africans themselves seized the initiative.